After we've installed the car, of course, we're going to be ready to benchmark the car. Um, installation is fairly simple. It installs the same way as any other PCIe uh, 2.0 card will install. Uh, drivers install very quickly. Um, as per our benchmarks, as they say, we're going, to, we're going to run our suite of benchmarks, and we're going to start out with 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, we will do three resolutions for 3D Mark Vantage. Uh, that's going to be the entry level, which is 1024 by 768. The performance level, which is 1280 by 1024, and the high level, which is 1680 by 1050. The reason why we're going to stop at 1680 by 1050 is because basically the main streamer himself is not going to be able to afford a monitor or won't want to purchase a monitor that is going to play in extreme resolutions. The average person has anywhere from a 19 inch wide to a 22 inch wide monitor. So for the purposes of this review, we will stay within the mainstream, which is uh, the focus of this card, and the focus of the Dragon platform itself. So. What I will do is I will go ahead and pause for about 10 seconds between benchmarks and we will look at our on-screen results and after the benchmarks themselves, what we will do is we will conclude our review. Next benchmark will be Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. Uh, this is a first person shooter. We'll run it in our three resolutions. Um, everything is going to be set to high in the, in the settings. Um, AA will be as high as it can go. So let's take a look at those benches. next benchmark will be Crisis. A lot of people say to me, Paul, why are you still benchmarking Crisis? Well, I've seen a lot of other websites who uh, are using Warhead, and it's a very good game, and it is a demanding game on a video card, but I feel that Warhead was kind of uh, watered down in a sense. Uh, so you could, so you could play with other video cards. Well, let's go ahead and uh, benchmark this first DirectX 10 game and see how well the card does with our progression. Our next game will be World in Conflict. It's a real-time strategy. Um, our settings for World in Conflict are going to be four times on the AA, 16 times on the AS. Every video setting will be set to very high. Uh, we will run our three resolutions on that and see how well it does. And our last benchmark will be on Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead, you can consider a first person shooter, but most people play that online, so you can play it with multiple people. Um, it also is a Havoc game. Um, a lot of people know about physics from NVIDIA, but ATI does have what they call Havocs as their physics engine. So I decided to go ahead and choose Left 4 Dead, since it is based on the Havocs uh, engine, uh, physics engine. So let's take a look at this one.
After looking at the benchmarks, we can see some major differences between the different platforms. Uh, we started out with the Spider platform, which had an, a an AMD Phenom 1 9600 and a 3870 video card. Then we progressed to our second platform, which would be the original Dragon platform, which consisted of an uh, AM2 chip, the 940X4, X and the 4870. Now, we did see a progression because A, we went from 320 uh, streaming processors to 800 streaming processors on the video card. We had GDDR3 with the 3870, moved along to GDDR5 with the 4870, and of course it still is GDDR5 with the 4890. Um, our clock speeds have increased, and we also have memory speeds that increased. Our third platform that we used is going to be the Refresh Dragon platform. The Diamond 4890 is part of that Refresh Dragon platform. And what we used was a DDR3 motherboard and an AMD Phenom 2 955 chip. Our benchmarks did increase. Our cost for the whole entire system did stay low. And I feel that if you are choosing just to even upgrade a video card, you will see a definite increase in performance with the HD4890 XOC by Diamond. In conclusion of this review, let's talk about its price point. The price on this video card is $254.99. You can get that on Newegg. Um, and when you compare it to the other overclocked versions in its class, it's right in the middle of the line. It's not overly expensive. It's not more than the other overclocked versions. It's not less. It's in the middle of the line. But we have to remember that Diamond is a United States based company. They are not out of Taiwan. So you are going to get technical support from the United States. You're going to get United States based technicians, etc. Um, I've dealt with Diamond for quite a long time. I started with the Monster Card. I've used their RMA service. I've used their technical support. I've never had a problem with Diamond. Um, I've always gotten quick RMAs and have always gotten an answer for any problems that I might have been having on the technical aspect. As per performance, the card performs well. It's an upgrade. It is definitely something that I would want to have in my system. It is a progression from the 4870 and of course the 3870. It did very well in all of our benchmarks. So as per performance, it's something that a mainstreamer is definitely going to enjoy. You will be able to achieve acceptable frame rates, which are over 30 frames per second in every game that we have benchmarked. And you'll be able to do HD, video streaming, etc. So it is a card that will encompass all of your video needs. So make sure you do go to ATI's site to get the latest drivers for the video card itself. Again, uh, we saw in our benchmarks, we did see a very good progression of the differences in the cards. And that is even with the 4890 stock, there was a good frame rate increase, which would warrant buying the XOC. So again, this is Paul with High Tech Legion. And this was our video review on the Diamond HD 4890 XOC video card. Thank you.